This year was available for quite a while for Fuji X and Nikon Z or Z mount. And now it's here for the Sony E mount, the Meiki 55mm f1.4. Hi guys, Dirk here. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today we're going to find out if this budget friendly lens performs well and if it's worth spending $200. Please tell me more. It is actually an APS-C camera lens. And when you're asking me why I attach this to my Sony A7C Mark II, because Leon has the A6700 and he's currently traveling. So I switched this to Super 35 mode and I'm using it here on this camera. How is the build quality? It is mainly made of plastic. Here at the back we do have a metal aperture ring that feels really nice and well built. And you can change the aperture with the clicking sound from f1.4 all the way to f16 or you can go one step further to A that allows you to change the aperture inside the camera body. Then we have here the make a print and an MF AF switch. Here at the front we have a large focus ring that goes smooth and it has a really nice resistance. What I like is the new feature of Makey lenses, this red rubber gasket that helps you to seal off the lens a little bit and protect it against dust and splash water. It is not really a full weather seal, but it definitely helps. So far so good, really good build quality, looks all very solid. And then we do have the top of the lens that I don't care much for. It is a shiny plastic and it looks kind of cheap. What about the lens design? The front filter size is 52 mm and it's a lightweight. It weighs only 286 gram. We have 11 elements in eight groups built in this lens, nine blades, and we get decent bokeh balls yeah, on the side, on the edges, they are a bit more cat eyeish, but overall a really good performance when it comes to bokeh and out of focus background. Can you get very close? It is not a macro lens. The minimum focusing distance is 63 cm, 2.1 feet, but that doesn't bother me much because 55 mm on an APS C camera translates into 82.5 mm, and that is a perfect portrait focal length. Is it really sharp? In terms of sharpness, this is an absolute winner. Already wide open at f1.4, we have a really great center sharpness. The sharpness reaches perfection in the center at f2.8. The corners are a bit softer, but that doesn't bother me at all because it is a portrait lens and I want my subject to be in focus and sharp. Everything else can be soft and out of focus. Please tell me more. This lens has almost no distortions. Here you can see the flaring of the lens against strong backlight. I also tested the Meiki 55mm f1.4 for longitudinal aberrations. To test this lens I went to downtown Fort Myers to take some pictures and I met George and Lyric and here you can see how this lens performs as a portrait lens wide open at f1.4 and I'm pretty impressed with that. What is the problem? One weakness of this lens is that strong contrasts that are out of focus are suffering from chromatic aberrations. This is something that you definitely have to attack in post-production. How is the focus? The built-in STM motor is relatively quiet in video mode. Here's an example. Very good. As you can see, we have a minimum of focus breathing and the AF performance is really good. I heard from other YouTubers that they were not happy with the AF performance. I had only one case when this lens wouldn't want to focus, but other than that, I nailed the focus every single time, no matter if I shot videos or photos. So I can't confirm that it has issues. Also, here in the back of this lens, we do have a USB-C port that will allow you to update the firmware. And if there are any issues, I'm sure Meiki is going to address that very soon. Naturally, at f1.4, we can achieve a really nice out of focus background and the bokeh looks pretty good. It is not the smoothest, but again, keep the price in mind. This lens costs only 200 bucks. Is the Sigma better? Now, if you want to know how it compares against the 56 mm from Sigma, I can honestly tell you that I have mixed emotions about that. The Sigma is slightly sharper and has a little bit less chromatic aberrations, but again, it costs twice the money and it doesn't have an aperture ring and it also doesn't have a USB-C port that allows you to update the firmware. I think it's a tie between the two lenses. If you're on a budget, then definitely you can't go wrong with the Meiki 55mm f1.4. If you're asking me, Dirk, you recently reviewed the Meiki 50mm f1.8 
and that was only 160 bucks, would you choose this over the 55 millimeter f1.4? A few points that speak for the Make 50 millimeter f1.8. One of them is the lower price, and of course, it's future proof in case you ever want to upgrade your system from APS-C to full frame. But the Make 55 millimeter f1.4, as the name suggests, has a faster aperture, and it also has an aperture ring here, and already wide open, it is sharper than the 50 millimeter f1.8. It really depends on your personal needs. I think if you have an APS-C camera, then this is the right choice for you. So, to sum it up, if you're on a budget and you want professional results, then I definitely can recommend the Meike 55mm f1.4. You have to do a little bit more work in post-production when it comes to chromatic aberrations. But other than this, there's not much to compromise. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Meike 55mm f1.4. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave me a comment. I'll definitely respond. Also, a free way to support my channel would be to leave a like. And if you like my channel overall, please consider to subscribe. It would really mean a lot to me. Till the next time, stay safe, stay tuned and take care. Bye for now.